Hello, welcome to Cooking Time. I'm David Martone, executive chef at Classic Time Cooking School. Today we have a wonderful show of risotto. Fall coming, we're gonna make three different risottos. Two of them are gonna be real quick in a pressure cooker and one the traditional method. Come right back and we'll show you what we're gonna do as far as menus. Hello, I'm David Martone, executive chef for Classic Time Cooking School in Westfield, New Jersey. Today we're doing risotto. Great fall menu. I've got three different risottos that we're doing. Uh, we're going to do one, the traditional method, with a little bit of chopped prosciutto, fresh mozzarella, an egg stirred in, and some freshly grated cheese. Uh, just a wonderful dish. I eat this as an entire meal. Uh, second one we're going to do is a butternut squash risotto, that whole fall feel. Butternut squash is going to be wonderful. And then we're going to do a wild mushroom risotto. So let's get down to business. We have the first dish we're going to make is the risotto that's actually an Arthur Schwartz recipe. If you're familiar with Arthur Schwartz, he was formerly on uh, WOR radio. And this was a recipe he did a long time ago at the school. And I've been cooking it ever since. It's just a wonderful recipe. Chopping up some onion. I've got my pot heating. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in. We're going to get our onion. And we want to saute that onion fairly slow. Risotto is a dish that people always associate with a tremendous amount of stirring, which is true. You have to stir this constantly. So doing three today, I'm going to be really um, uh, stretched trying to keep them all moving, although two of them are going to be in a pressure cooker. But that doesn't mean that the uh, third one can be left unattended, since while I'm doing the one in the pressure cooker, I've got to keep attention on the, uh, the traditional method one. So I chop up an onion, and we put that in. Now, risotto, you're using a special kind of rice for risotto. If you look at the rice carefully, you'll see that it looks like it has a bit of a, a little translucent exterior to it. And it's a, a starchy rice. It's a short grain. We're using arborio rice. You could use carnarali rice, which is just another type. We want to keep our onion moving. The carnarali or aborio rice needs to be stirred, not to keep it from sticking, but you want to create the friction against each other with the rice. And that's what's going to gently help shed a little bit of that exterior, that starchy exterior on the rice, which is really going to make it creamy. And, and that's what risotto is all about. It's that creamy, creamy texture. It's just a wonderful, wonderful dish. While we're doing the onion, I'm going to uh, chop up a little bit of fresh mozzarella. That's going to get stirred in at the end, which will help cream this up even more with an egg. Just cut this up into nice little cubes. So we have all of our items prepped and ready to go. I'll keep that piece of mozzarella there for later. Maybe I'll snack on that. And now while that's happening, I'm going to start one of the other ones. And then we'll get the third one going. They're all starting in the same manner. Except the first one we're doing, which is with the prosciutto and fresh mozzarella, we're going to start with olive oil, straight olive oil. Second one, we're going to start with a little bit of butter and a little bit of olive oil. So we get that melting. The butter is going to add a little bit more of a creamy flavor to it. But back to all three and their similarities. They're all starting with some chopped onion. So we're going to start the um, squash one. When I chop onions, I like to peel them, cut them straight down through the center. We, we call that um, uh, through the um, axis of the onion. And then I cut thin slices across in one direction, holding my fingers on the opposite side of the knife so that it holds the onion from falling apart. Then I start to take slices on either side of the onion 
for the first slice and then I cut right through and the onion stays together and it all works out perfect. Okay, here's our onion in our second pot. The second one we're going to do in a pressure cooker. This is going to allow us to not stand over it and stir it constantly and the high heat created by the uh, pressure cooker will allow that starchy exterior of the rice to melt and um, melt evenly and create a nice creamy texture. Now that the onion's tender in the first one, and I'll try not to confuse you because we're going to have three of them going, I'm going to add the rice to this one and we want to just toast that rice around. I'm going to get another spoon out now for this one. Butter and oil melting. Rice toasting in the first one. Move on to the third one, which is going to be a wild mushroom risotto. Remember, we have the one with prosciutto fresh mozzarella. We have the um, butternut squash. And now we're going to start on the wild mushroom. So cutting the onion again the same way. If you cut your onions quick, with a sharp knife, you'll avoid getting as much eye tearing as you would doing it slow with a dull knife. Working with a dull knife crushes the onion instead of slicing through, thereby emitting a whole bunch more gas when those cells break in the onion. A little bit of science in with the uh, cooking today. Okay. Put a little olive oil in this one, and this one will work similar to the um, other one, the mushroom and the squash will both have a little bit of butter and the olive oil. So, so far we have similarity between all three that we're sauteing onion to start. Difference with the two is that two of them have butter as well as the olive oil and the first one simply has the olive oil. Now we're at a point where we're going to start to add some stock. I've got some stock already warmed and for the traditional method you'll hear a big sizzle because the pan is still hot when I add this stock initially. We want to add just enough stock to cover the rice and then we're going to constantly give this a stir as much as we can so that we create that nice friction. And we've got onion sauteing in butter here. Kick this heat up a little bit. Now to keep track of all my spoons is going to be another job and a half. And here we have our onion in the olive oil and butter as well. At this point, both of these are the same. I could do mushrooms here or squash here. It really, really doesn't make a difference. The difference with um, the mushroom one versus a regular mushroom, this wild mushroom risotto we're doing, I'm using dried mushrooms that I've reconstituted. This is a blend of wild mushrooms. There's shiitake, there's oyster, um, a variety of other mushrooms. We've soaked them in some water so they reconstitute and plump up. And as you can see, that liquid is um, terribly uh, uh, dark in color, not terribly, uh, wonderfully dark in color, but, but uh, totally infused with um, the mushroom essence. And we don't want to throw that away, although we don't want to use every last bit of it because sometimes when you reconstitute these mushrooms, you get a little bit of sediment that comes out of them um, that can be kind of gritty that goes down to the bottom. So we're going to add that to one of our, um, our pots just as soon as our onion is nice and tender. As soon as the liquid gets absorbed into the rice, uh, we add more liquid. When we're doing the pressure cooker method, we're adding the liquid pre-measured all at once, bring it up to pressure, and cook it for um, seven minutes for a uh, single recipe. Okay. I'm going to add squash to this one. 
Give that a stir. My other one, we're ready for our mushrooms. I'm going to strain this out and then I'm going to use my mushroom liquid or we call it mushroom liquor as part of the cooking liquid. If you can get dried porcini mushrooms, they're extremely flavorful. You can also substitute some fresh mushrooms and put them in again at this period, sauteing them with the onion. And now it becomes a big stirring game. This is starting to absorb my rice in here. Add a little bit of white wine. The proportions for liquid to this are approximate with the uh, traditional method. They're more exacting when we work with the pressure cooker because it's added all at once. So with this, the traditional method, we're adding liquid, letting it absorb, adding liquid, letting it absorb, and tasting when we see that rice starting to plump up, that we can see when that rice is cooked. When the rice is fully cooked and nice and creamy, we're at a point where we can um, stop and add our finishing ingredients, which will be cheese. Okay, we are ready for rice in the butternut squash. I forgot to mention an important ingredient that I'm doing with the um, mushroom one. I do so many of these recipes, they all blend together, and some of them work with many different um, uh, subcategories. So we have the regular wild mushroom risotto, but I almost forgot that today I happen to see some nice chestnuts already cooked and peeled so we're going to do again since a nice fall method and chestnuts always make me feel like the uh, cool weather is upon us we're going to do a chestnut and wild mushroom so simply adding one ingredient changes the recipe so really you have two recipes if you don't like chestnuts you don't have to add them but then again I can't imagine anybody who doesn't like chestnuts when I was a little boy chestnuts really hold a special place in my heart um, all food makes me think about people and places and, and things I've done. When I was a little boy, my grandfather, uh, growing up in Jersey City, my grandfather also living in Jersey City, uh, my grandfather didn't drive and lived completely on the other side of town, which in Jersey City could be 10, 14 miles away. He used to take the bus over to my house and around the holidays, he would take me into New York City and we would do a whole day in New York City. We would go to FAO Schwartz and we would go to the Empire State Building and now, now I'm gonna date myself. He'd take me to the Automat. Yes, there was such a place called the Automat for those folks uh, who might be a little bit more in my generation or older would uh, know about that. And um, as we were walking around, you know, I'd get cold. I, I don't like the uh, cold weather at all and I chill quickly so I'd say pop we really need to uh, go inside and warm up someplace and he would say no 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 and we'd find a food vendor and he would simply buy me chestnuts a bag of chestnuts we'd put them in our pockets and keep our hands warm it was um, the most wonderful thing and I, I always think about that walking around with my hands in the pocket, keeping them warm with those wonderful chestnuts we bought, and uh, eating them one at a time. I'm going to start to add my liquid to the mushroom and chestnut. Okay. I left a little bit in the bowl. Going to add some liquid to my squash.
Going to add a little wine to each one. Now here's the pressure cooker trick. We get these to come to a simmer. Notice how I'm going from pot to pot stirring. Got to pay real good attention in this class. Once I bring these both to a simmer with the pressure cooker, I can put the lid on the pressure cooker and then I can time both of them. I need seven minutes while I'm continuing to watch my traditional method risotto. It's always back and forth, back and forth. Stir every one. As soon as the liquid starts to simmer, we want to put the lid on and then we want to adjust the pressure by adjusting the flame up or down so it's not overcooking and uh, scalding on the bottom. So we have our liquid simmering in the squash risotto. I'm going to put our lid on and now I give it a little shake and if you notice there's a little valve on the top here that starts to rise indicating that we're increasing the level of pressure. This particular model and every one is, um, is, is different in its own way and there are instructions with everyone to tell you exactly what you need to do. This particular model has two levels of pressure. It's uh, seven and a half pounds and 14 pounds. And what this is doing is it's raising the boiling point of the, uh, of the liquid. I, I believe it at the seven and a half pound uh, range, it raises the boiling point to about 247 degrees, which makes uh, uh, for a much quicker cooking, trapping all of the uh, uh, steam in between. So when it gets to that first level indicating the seven and a half pounds, I'm now going to lower this down and let this cook uh, seven minutes. I'll check my watch here and hopefully I won't, uh, uh, won't forget about it. So here's our first one cooking nicely. I'm going to add a little bit more stock to this. You have to start worrying about how much stock you're adding because if the rice is starting to get done and you add a whole bunch more stock to it, what's going to happen is that you're going to have to cook that down to absorb all that stock and you run the risk of overcooking the risotto, which we certainly don't want to do. I'm going to give a little taste here with my tasting spoon. Getting close. Lower down this one over here. To release the pressure, you simply press on the valve. Uh, if you gain too much pressure, all you do is press down until the pressure releases. So maybe you're at 14 and you want to be at 7. You just hold this down until it goes back down to the first uh, uh, ring. Same, same with, uh, with this one. Sometimes I like to give them a little shake like this because you can't get in there and stir them. But in the initial cooking, while it's still loose inside, I shake the pot a little bit and it just uh, makes me feel better that, uh, that nothing's really sticking inside. Okay, this one needs just a couple more minutes and what we're going to do for the finish, we have our prosciutto and our egg. When we shut it off, we're actually going to add the egg. We're going to add the cheese, the grated cheese, which they're all going to get some grated cheese. Both the um, uh, squash and the mushroom chestnut are going to get grated cheese as well as some brie. We have some wonderful um, creamy brie here. Picking up my empty ramekin. See, this is a, a wonderful creamy brie that has no rind in it. We're going to stir that in to really cream up those two, the mushroom uh, chestnut and the squash. A 
just two more minutes we're looking at uh, now I'm really trying to keep this one moving the traditional one because we're getting close as far as this rice plumping up and being wonderful and I still have stock I just shut this one down I'm going to add a tiny bit more stock because as we're finishing it it will continue to absorb that stock give these both a little uh, shake this one seems to be pumping up quite well I'm going to release a little of the pressure okay here's our fresh mozzarella I'm going to stir that in again it's off the flame as a matter of fact what I'll do is move it right to my cutting board so we don't have too too much heat our egg you want to definitely keep this moving as you put the egg in and actually I'm going to put our grated cheese before I put the egg so that the egg acts also to loosen it back up grated cheese fresh mozzarella here's our egg don't worry about the fact that the egg is raw it's going to loosen up and then it's going to heat up and cook we only need that egg to come to 160 degrees this was simmering so we know it was at 212 there's more than enough heat trapped in this pan wait do you see how stringy this one gets just letting a little more pressure out of this I had to heat up just a little bit too high I think we're about five minutes with this we need another minute or two and now we have our cubed up prosciutto which we're going to add to this can see the stringiness of this just waiting for all that mozzarella to melt it's going to take another minute each of these um, pressure cooker um, risottos need to get opened in a specific manner so what we need is a sink with some cool water this is called the quick release method we're going to put the pressure cooker with some water running down the side and press to release the pressure In the old days, you'd have to worry about pressure cookie, cooking um, and problems with exploding pressure cookers and faulty valves. Today, they're all equipped with safety valves that won't allow the pressure cookers to uh, explode. You can't even open the pressure cooker while there's pressure in it. So rather than hearing stories about my grandmother's aunt's girlfriend's sister-in-law in Colorado that blew her dentures to Texas and pea soup on the ceiling um, these are all working well with uh, safety mechanisms uh, built in okay this one as well we're going to put some brie in this Scrape that down. Okay. And we're going to put some grated cheese. And we'll mix that one up. And now we're going to open up the other one. Same method cool water, release the pressure. There's also a little diverter valve on this that while the steam is coming out, it's being diverted away from my hand. So I'm not worried about the steam coming up and burning my hand. Okay. Now we need our brie. 
debris again. Same finish for both. You can check for salt and pepper on the end, depends on the type of stock that you're using, the amount of salt and pepper that you might need or not need. In this case, we're using our homemade stock, so I know that it has little to no salt, so it may need a little bit, but I'm not even going to put any in and let you folks decide when you taste it, because you'll have your own stock. Okay. Start to get this dished out. Mushroom. Just gonna let that sit to get that brie melted in. Get another bowl. This one's really nice and. Uh, Colorful with those beautiful fall colors. Put this one here, and let's get our other one here. Set that there, and one more spoon. cheese on this one. So today we've made three risottos. One in the traditional method, which was the one with fresh mozzarella, diced prosciutto. They all started with onion sauteing in either oil or a combination of oil and butter. For the ones I said the oil and the butter, you can omit the butter if you prefer and use straight olive oil. We finished this traditional one, which remember we had to stir the entire time. We finished this one with a raw egg stirred in that actually cooks, uh, fresh mozzarella and prosciutto and some hand grated cheese. Here's our butternut squash. Um, cooked in a pressure cooker, seven minutes, no stirring until, until it's all done and we mix everything back in. This one finished with some grated cheese and some brie. And our wild mushroom risotto, which again finished with brie and grated cheese. I'm David Martone, executive chef at Classic Time Cooking School. You've been cooking with us, full risotto. Mm -hmm.